Um, so thank you, Tyler. Uh, that all is true, uh, although I'm a little shy hearing it in front of so many people. Um, the part that, like you said, is not on that bio is what led me to all of this. So um, I run a campaign, like Tyler said, in Oregon called Keep Oregon Well. We launched it in 2014. Um, it is an anti-stigma campaign, anti-discrimination, equity and inclusion, um, social movement that is uh, built around the sanctuary principles of trauma-informed care. So I don't know if you're familiar with that. Everybody familiar with ACEs or the Adverse Childhood Experience Study? Yeah. Wow, okay, great. Um, so it's built on that. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But basically what happened um, was I was asked by this organization, Trillium Family Services, which is the largest provider of mental and behavioral health care for children and families in Oregon, to come build an advocacy platform. That would have never happened if you know the 20 years before that had not occurred. So I'll start back a little ways. Um, I grew up, I was born into a Christian family in York, Nebraska. I was actually born in Texas, moved to York, it's a population of 5,000 people. Um, really fundamentalist cult is the, the way that I would describe the church that I was raised in. It was not affirming, it was uh, difficult. Um, but I had a loving family, and, um, and, and I really felt held by that family. When I was seven, uh, my dad and mom invited a man from our church, the college church that my dad taught at, to come live with us, He's a student, college student. Uh, and from the age of seven to nine, I was um, raped repeatedly and, and abused and, and molested by this man. Uh, and not in a normal way, like, like rape is ever normal, but this was also tied into um, my spiritual side. So a afterwards, I, I had a lot of damage done, not just to my body and my mind, but also to my relationship with my family and God. Um, so that went largely unnoticed, <laughs> untreated. Um, I, I think my parents just thought I had something wrong with me. And I did, um, but I, it was because something had happened to me. So we kind of, as families do around trauma, that's uh, inexplicable. It got pushed under the rug. I didn't disclose. I was so afraid that if I did, I was gonna go to hell because my attacker had told me that. Um, and so I didn't. But when I had puberty hit and hormones happened, um, it all surfaced and I became very, very depressed and suicidal. Um, and my parents took me to a therapist. Uh, this was a therapist who was also involved in our, uh, our church. And that therapist, I was 14, and he outed me that night to my parents. I had told him um, that I was gay and that I had been seeing a, a boy at my school. And he outed me. The boy had just turned 18 and, and, and told my parents if they didn't take me and, and remove me from the home and the community that he would go to prison. So that night I went to live with a different family in Tennessee. And when I came home a year later, I was a full blown drug addict. I had experimented uh, using, starting at the, the age of 10, self-medicating and, and eventually found cocaine and cocaine filled the God-shaped hole in my life. Um, so I was homeless. You know, it was interesting being there with you all today. Um, because I felt uh, like those were my people. You know, I, I spent years on the streets, uh, in and out of housing. Um, really, really tough in Portland to get help if you're not clean. I don't love that word, but uh, if you're not sober and, and, and not using, you can't get services. So I, I struggled a lot in and out of, of the hospital, in and out of relationship, in and out of my home. Uh, and I also had that love from the beginning, it was still inside, but my, my family's love from, from before they had kicked me out, from before everything had fallen apart. Um, and I was in, I had a, a music, a musician in me, you know, I felt I felt like I had songs I wanted to write. And so I started doing that. I was on the streets, but I was also writing songs and, and had this lifeline, which was music. And eventually a man named Elliot Smith discovered me and, and the Dandy Warhol signed me to their label. And, and I used my signing bonus to put myself into rehab for a year. This was the ninth time probably I was in rehab. I had had a, a T, TIA pre-stroke from crack cocaine and landed up in, landed in the hospital. My legs and arms didn't work. It was a mess. Um, 
But finally, after all these years of going in and out, of having my, my symptoms treated, I had a doctor who finally said, what's going on with you? Did you just decide to be a drug addict? Did you just grow up thinking it would be wonderful to be homeless and have all the relationships in your life ruined? And I, I, you know, I was very defensive and said no. And, and he leaned in and said, what has happened to you? Mm. And we, that started this journey uh, of having somebody really see me, see my pain, see, see that I was using, but I was using because of a reason. I, I was trying to um, detach myself from my reality and my trauma. And then I started singing about that. So right around that same time, I got well, and I had been signed to EMI and had a show on MTV and started talking about this stuff, not, not in this great detail, but talking about resilience, talking about getting clean and, and being well, and, and talking about my experience in the church. And, and slowly but surely, that became more intentional. And I started um, speaking about my story uh, on behalf of the LGBTQ community and, and did a bunch of work with homeless queer youth. Uh, and then I, like I said, in 2014, had done a little bit of work um, with Cover Oregon and, and had sort of blended this rock and roll with, with public health in a way that, that was noticed by some people at this organization. They asked me to come see if I would use this skill set uh, to benefit that or and I did. And we, we built Keep Oregon Well from there. Um, it's a coming out movement. You know, I had lived this in my life around um, having the people who had kicked me out come around over the years. You know, I, I, I kept reaching out to them. I kept showing who I was and, and eventually those relationships that had mattered so much um, came back into my life. Uh, people got to know me as, as Logan Lynn and as gay Logan Lynn and that those people were the same. And so I knew that if we applied that science, for lack of a better term, to mental and behavioral health, the same thing could happen. So we started a coming out movement. Sheila Hamilton, who's sitting here in the front, uh, is an award-winning journalist and uh, has a radio show. We started by going on her radio show and, and I told my story and she told hers. And then we had a big event where we offered a uh, safe space for community leaders to come and do the same. Uh, and it has really caught fire from there. Um, and I think what has been the coolest part about it is being able to celebrate um, the thing that has historically felt like a burden. You know, like I, I am, I have this record that came out this last year that's all about my own persistent suicidal ideation that I struggle with to this day. It's who I am, and also I'm successful. And I think I'm successful probably because of that neurodiversity. That, that's what makes me different, it makes me um, resilient enough to even be in the music industry or in the world. So. Um, that's, that's my deal. I think, you know, the, the complicated thing is people don't always want to hear your deal. And I think we reject that at Keep Oregon Well. You know, that's the, we're trying to make mental health cool. We're trying to get, it, or get across that it's actually much, much better to be honest about who you are than hide, uh, whether that's about your identity or about your own mental health condition. It really is all of us. We all have brains. We all have trauma. And we were all little kids at one point. Mm. Uh, and some of us got through that differently than others, but it was a struggle, I think, for everybody, and we can all identify where, where things went wrong. So, that being said, I think we want to center this around ACEs. I 